I say all the time that religion isn't harmless. Oftentimes I think people assume I'm just talking about extremism, like Scientology and the Westboro Baptist Church, but I'm not. Not exclusively, at least. This is part three of my series on how more casual religions can cause harm. You can check out the first two parts in the description, or I'll have a card popping up right about now too. Today I'm going to be talking about the effects of sexual repression that's caused by religion. It seems pretty much like common sense that a lot of religions, far too many, call for celibacy until marriage, disallow homosexuality, or otherwise restrict a person's sexuality. But we shouldn't take anything for granted, so let's start out by providing some evidence for this claim. If you'd like more, check the description. We are all very aware of the scandals surrounding the Catholic Church right now. Victim after victim coming forward about child sexual abuse at the hands of a priest. This isn't just because the Catholic Church by chance keeps picking pedophiles and perverts for positions of power. Repressing your sexuality just isn't healthy. With very few exceptions, these priests are not allowed to get married. And of course, the sex isn't allowed outside of marriage, so most of these priests are expected to live out their lives in celibacy without the opportunity to explore their sexuality whatsoever. Anyone given such unrealistic expectations is bound to go a little nuts. How many children could have been spared such a horrifying and traumatic experience had the Catholic Church just had more realistic and humane expectations for their priests? Sexuality is completely natural and healthy to explore. People start exploring their bodies as young as infancy. Masturbation is incredibly healthy. In addition to decreasing stress and tension, helping to relieve pain, and helping a person fall asleep, masturbating frequently can help a person reduce their risk of developing prostate cancer. More specifically, orgasming four to seven times per week can help reduce a person's risk of developing prostate cancer by 33% when compared to those who only orgasmed one to three times a week. These orgasms can occur via sex, masturbation, or nocturnal emission. Doesn't matter, you still get this this decreased risk of prostate cancer. As long as you cram your jeans, <laughs> Be this is why I don't record with you home! <laughs> Any amount of masturbation is a healthy amount. If this is something you only do once a month or once a year, or not at all, not a problem. If you were more of a two times a day kind of person, also no big deal. The only time masturbation becomes a problem is when the frequency of it interferes with school, work, or your social life. If this becomes the case, I recommend that you speak with a professional and don't be ashamed, you're, you're not alone in this. Other than that though, have fun. Now, sexual repression isn't just about masturbation. Far too many religions reject the idea of any kind of a relationship that isn't between two cisgendered heterosexuals. For starters, hiding one's sexuality can cause dissociation, which is disconnecting yourself from your thoughts, feelings, memories, or identity. A person's self-esteem can be heavily affected by repressing their sexuality as well, which comes with a whole slew of problems of its own. If a person is repressed long enough, they might start to become internally homophobic as a result of the resentment. I want to read you a story that I found on a forum, and this is from 2015, and it didn't have any sort of update, so I don't know how this guy's doing now. I hope he's doing alright. Um, I just felt like this is a really good representation of a, a lot of what I'm talking about when it comes to repressing one's sexuality. Hi, I don't really know what I'm doing or what I expect to gain from this website, but I think I may just need to tell somebody, anybody, what I'm going through. I'm not your typical gay closet story. I'm the one that involves ridiculously amazing parents that are hardcore Christians and an awesome family, cousins and siblings, etc., that are also all hardcore Christians. So what does someone like me who has grown up in a great family environment and who believes that God exists do when he knows that he is gay. If I come out, there is no way in hell anybody from my family will be like, oh, that's okay, we just want you to be happy. Or, we knew all along, actually, we were just waiting for you to accept yourself. No. If I came out, there would be fights, tears, hatred, and maybe even heart attacks. Not even kidding. The thing is, I respect and love my parents so much that I don't want to hurt them by coming out. My mom already deals with too much crap with her job and not to mention her parents are freaking nuts and drive her mad. So she's always way too stressed and overworked. 
Then there's my dad, who is the person I respect the most in my life. His dad died when he was around 12, so not only did he lack a fatherly figure, but he became the man of the house at age 13. He drove his mom around, took care of his siblings, and my entire life he had worked his ass off to pay for school, a comfortable home, and do it all with a smile on his face. He literally went from living in a trailer with his mom and two siblings to building an amazing life for me and my siblings. So how could I possibly tell him that his son, one of the people he worked so hard for to give all the chances he never got, is not only a homosexual, but as a result will likely never see heaven according to his beliefs. It's torture, it's cruel, and it's not fair. But then there is me to think about, because I'm always hiding myself. I can't make any real connections with anybody. I have lost all my best friends because of my lack of ability to de-shield myself, to, the op to open up, and to be a genuine person. And what makes it worse is that my biggest fear in life isn't, isn't dying or failing, it is having to spend every day alone. Not with somebody I love. The closet is turning me into an empty and depressed person, a hateful person, bitter and annoying, and absolutely heartless person. When in reality, none of those things, I'm none of those things, nor do I want to become them. So the question is whether I value my own happiness over the happiness of my family, if I would be willing to hurt my family in a way they have never been hurt before, just so that I could stop lying and hating myself. Sometimes I think I should just move to another country when I graduate and attempt to live my life away from my family, but I know I would miss them and I would still be lying, which would continue to eat me up. And these are all of my issues before even considering my faith, what little I have. Anyways, if you read this, thanks for listening. Maybe someone who can relate has something to say. I feel like this story captures a lot of what I'm trying to get at here about repressing a person's sexuality. This young man feels like it's his responsibility to keep his family happy by hiding who he really is. It's killing him inside and he feels like it's his fault and that's his responsibility to make sure he stays like this. How many kids are out there who are like him? How many of them have taken their own lives because of this sort of thing? Jimmy from the channel Dear Mr. Atheist talks a lot about dead kids in Utah as a result of the homophobia in the Mormon church, but this isn't just a Mormon issue. This is the case across the religious board. This attitude about sex and sexuality is unhealthy and problematic. It needs to stop. We need to stop it. That's all for this video. If you've liked this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Comment down below. Give me your stories. Give me your ideas on how we could help the situation. Follow me on Twitter. That's my Twitter handle. Subscribe if you want more content from me in the future. And as always, stay unholy, my friends.